If you've never downloaded one of our free labs libraries before, here's a brief guide. To download labs, you'll first need to create an account on our website, click the login button, log in if you already have an account, or create an account by typing in your email, first name, last name, and the password of your choice. You can also select the button below to be notified of when we release new labs products via email. Next, I'm going to download the app by typing in application in the search bar. This takes you to the app page where you'll be able to download for Mac and Windows. I'm using Macintosh, so I'm going to download the Mac version. You'll now find the installer in your downloads folder on Mac and Windows. Double click to open the installer and then simply drag the application to your application folder. You can now remove the installation file from your downloads folder and eject the Spitfire Audio installer. Now you can navigate to applications where the Spitfire Audio will reside. Double click to open and select open. Type in your computer password to install the helper tool. The Spitfire Audio app will now open and you should log in with the email and password you used when you created your account. If you've forgotten your password, click on the forgot password link or if you're yet to create an account, click create account. Once you've logged in, you'll be taken to the product page. If you don't own any products, you'll be taken straight to the labs page where all of our labs products are now available for you to install straight away. Prior to installing our labs libraries, I recommend you check your default content path. This is where the libraries are installed on your device and can be set to an internal or external hard drive. We recommend storing sample libraries on an external SSD. When you're ready to install, navigate to the library you wish to install or simply use the search box to search for a specific labs library. When you're ready, hit install, check the install location is correct and the library will begin to download. If you're not sure what labs libraries you need, select the labs link on the Spitfire Audio homepage. You'll be taken to the labs page where you'll be able to view exclusive content, including the demos for each product. Use the instrument filter to filter out instruments within the same family or genre. Or if you have a specific labs library in mind, use the search bar. When you finish downloading your labs library, it will be immediately available in the dedicated labs plugin. Within Logic, this can be found under AU Instruments, Spitfire Audio, Labs, and then select Stereo. Hit Create to create a track. You'll need a single instance of the Labs plugin per track that you create. If you find the Labs plugin is too big for your screen, you can reduce its size by dragging the bottom right icon. Here are some preferences to be aware of. Firstly, the light in the top left corner will be flashing if samples are loading. You should only use the instrument if this light is solid green. Next, the CPU indicator indicates the processing power the plugin is currently using and the disk indicator indicates the load the plugin is putting on your install location, whether that's an internal or external device. The memory icon is the specific amount of RAM that's being used for this patch and the voices indicates how many voices the instrument is currently using. The refresh icon can be used if the MIDI notes within the plugin become stuck. Alternatively, you can control plus click to bring up several options, including refreshing all of your instances of labs within your DAW. Next, we have the tune knob, which can be used to increase or decrease the pitch of the instrument by up to three octaves. Double click to reset this back to default. The pan knob can also be used to reset the signal to a left or right stereo pan. And finally, the volume knob controls the volume of the instrument. We recommend leaving this at 100%. The final button allows us to change our plugin preferences in terms of the maximum voices, preload size, stream buffer size, and the master tuning of the instrument. We recommend leaving these settings at default. On the interface, we have two sliders. These are expression, which controls overall volume, and is connected to CC11 and dynamics, which allows you to fade between the dynamic layers. The main knob parameters can be changed by clicking on the center icon, and this is currently set to reverb. Next to the graphic keyboard, we have downwards and upwards arrows, so you can set the octave range that is visible. To the right of that, we have the pitch bend indicator and the modulation wheel indicator. 
which will change as you move this on your MIDI keyboard. The modulation wheel by default is set to dynamics. Finally, if you wish to reset any of the MIDI CC on the interface for your specific controller, you can control and click to remove MIDI CC and then learn MIDI CC. When you select learn MIDI CC, move the fader or knob on your MIDI interface you wish to connect. If you found this video helpful, please consider giving it a like and let us know your feedback or any questions in the comments. And of course, make sure you subscribe for exclusive Spitfire Audio tips and tricks.